<laughs> we are live. No more smart ass remarks, Shane. Welcome to another installment of the Final Scoop podcast. My name is Robert Chinesky, the supplement engineer. Joining me as always is my international cavalcade of compatriots and troublemakers in Lucas Rakowski, Prometheus Intelligence Sports Technology, Robert Saborski, Apollo Nutrition, and the Lord Shane of the Shire, Smith, stack.com. My friends, it's that's good a, to see you all again. That's a, that's a, that's a real thing. I, I am a lord. <laughs> you are a lord now. I uh, I don't know if you saw that. I was watching uh, was a Ch- one of Chell Sullen's videos. It's this whole thing that's going around the internet where like you buy a piece of land, mm-hmm. like it's a one one meter by one meter squared like plot of land yeah. from this person in Scotland or whatever, and if you are Apparently, you own part of land in Scotland. You're a lord. <laughs> and I said to my wife, I said, I said, do you want to be a lady? And she said, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> and then I was like, I went to it and I read about it and I was like, this sounds fucking cool. And then, you know, I got the Facebook ads, obviously, because I kept, because, you know, they got the, they got the tag on me. And then they showed me the tip, early Black Friday sale, two for one. I was like, I'm buying it. And I hit up my friend. I was like, bro, what do you want? He's like, I'm in. I'll take the other one. So we got two for one. (laughs) And I I refer to you as Lord Shane every every time we address you on this show. This is exactly what I've been telling my wife. No more baby no more baby face. No more baby face. Well, that sends us to the guillotine if that happens. We get sent to the guillotine. (laughs) For insulting his lordship. <laughs> I was so like, my question like 25 is 25 bucks. Did I say it again? It was 25 bucks. Damn, that's not New Zealand dollars or American dollars that's, or British? That's freedom. That's freedom money. Freedom money. Okay. 25 freedom units of uh, yeah. currency. Hot damn. Okay. So, uh, you know, concomitant with your lordship, I think you should increase the advertising rates on stack so you can stop driving that Corolla now. I don't mind the Corolla. I don't mind it. You don't mind it. It is. It is what it is. Which that brings us to our our point that we were talking about before we hit the go live button. We're talking about Shane, Bill Shane building out his garage that he has, or his gym garage that he has. Since New Zealand, you, y'all still can't go out and train at the the regular gym, can you? I believe we are going to get freedom on December first. Okay. I mean, I've been thinking this shit for like, you know, every two weeks for the last three yeah. months. So who knows? Well, I think we're what on like the hundred and eighth week of the two weeks push to slow the spread. So I mean, you know, just keep going. Just, yeah, another, so maybe another two weeks. It, it seems very confident. December first, we're going to do some some gym shit, and I'm likely to break some muscles and do something when I go back. But yeah, okay. that's the part of it. I don't because yeah. I remember last time they were like. Make sure you edge it, like you ease back into it. Mm-hmm. Like, fuck that! I was like, I'm an idiot. I want to, I want to hurt something. Fair enough. That's what we were, uh, we were discussing for other listeners that have no idea what the hell we're talking about. We we're talking about Shane's gym garage and what pieces of equipment he could possibly because obviously he's got a rack and a barbell and some free weights. Uh, and I said, are you going to add anything else to just build it out to where you don't have to worry about going to the gym anymore? I said, you know, something maybe like a leg press, to which Shane replied. How big do you think this fucking garage is, bro? It's like one car, it's like a car wide. Maybe a little bit either side, right? I, got I mean, and a leg press would literally take up the other half. I'll be, I'll and be if, I were to add, if I were to add another piece of equipment, it wouldn't be a leg press. No? I don't know what it would be. But no, no, I don't know. I don't, don't want to. You need a big. Uh, it'd have to be something that I could possibly do more than one fucking exercise on. I would definitely go with like a uh, leg press that is converted to high squat. That's awesome. Yeah, something like that, maybe? Rogue iso leg press? Or... Nah, it needs to be more upright. Nah. That would take up too much space. Sorry, but fuck rogue. That's shit. Oh, it's it's very expensive. But the the other the other downside with leg press is that you then need a shitload of plates to get anything from it. That's true. And I've only yeah, got 
it depends it depends what what type of like track press you uh you're talking about because for example uh my friend has like a leg press that is right that is converted to a like hex bar and when you like put on like i don't know four four plates on it that are like 45 45 pounds you can feel your legs like tremendously so i don't think i've ever legs. done a leg press where i i didn't need seven or eight plates aside i've never ever like they've always been extremely easy i don't know i've only got i've only got six and that's that's because that's how much i thought i could deadlift if i was on steroids well i i also i also don't <laughs> i haven't run. deadlifted that much yet but i thought well, yeah, yeah man I one also, day yeah i, I also don't want to brag because honestly when i'm using like leg press i'm like putting at least 250 kilograms so yeah, i don't you know can, yeah that's that, that's like the minimum for me you know when it comes to like leg press and i'm just like starting to warm up Less, yeah, it's uh, like, easy. My last, my last like session, like I ended on like three hundred and twenty kilograms. So, you know, it's, it, but it's you know it's easy, but at, <laughs> at the same time, you know, it, it all depends how you perform your, your this exercise. You know, yeah, you can do you like. Can, uh, I don't want to buy a leg press and then have to go buy twenty more plates. <laughs> True. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be fucking expensive. What about yeah. something like this? Like it's a, a, a reverse leg press or a standing leg press, however you want to call it. Look, look, dude, we're discussing pointless topics. I'm not going to buy anything else for the last 10 days of my lockdown. My wife would... She, I mean, I got away with being buying my lordship. I'm not going to be able to buy a $1,500 leg press. Does the queen officially recognize you as a lord now is my question. I don't know. I don't read that. Yeah. Lord Shane looking fresh as usual. Babyface is a sign of his youth. He doesn't need collagen for that glow. We We're not doing a giveaway today, Shreda, but I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did you, leg seated, did you leg know, slid. Did you guys notice that he's always like complimenting like Shane? Like right now. He might not time. be doing it for the giveaway. He might oh, just man. think they'll look great. You don't know. I don't know what's I, going on. But, I actually have uh, another question, and this is for the American people. Look good here. See, Pete agrees with me. The standing leg sled. There you go. Is uh, do Americans call pasta noodles? Uh, I mean, every now and then, like if you're eating ramen noodles, we'll call it noodles. Okay. Or if I'm going no, no. to so like, like a Vietnamese or a Chinese restaurant, what is, a noodle what do you dish, use, I don't get a pasta dish there. What do you use to make macaroni and cheese? I think it's uh, called pasta. Yeah, I call it. I, I buy the elbow macaroni. It's pasta. Yeah. So, like, because the I think the I new think wonder, the the, noodles are referred mostly when it when it's referred to Asian food. Yeah, it's like it's like a long noodle. It's like a so I went to uh, I was we wrote the story about Wonder Woman's protein uh, no, pa protein noodles. Technically, it's mm -hmm. her high protein macaroni and cheese. Mm -hmm. And she refers to them as noodles. Well, she don't forget it... that she's Israeli, so it's my yes. But I googled this, and it is a thing. Americans call pasta noodles. I don't know if it's like a big, big thing, but she Maybe used different know. types of pasta, like uh, elbows, the uh, Maybe she spirals. Just it that way. No, no, no. It's okay. Understand that it's it's from her, but it's from like her and five other people. It's not like entirely her. I, I don't know. Maybe it also depends on the area, you know, which coast. Yeah, that's what I was. Because uh, I know that here, like on the east coast, or at least in New Jersey, like I, I would say seventy-five, eighty uh, percent, people refer to it as pasta. But on, you know, when it comes to Asian food, it's referred more like noodles. Yeah, yeah. yeah same it's here. same here. It, it no, but but I would be. What comes uh, down to the shape, like, the shape of, the, of, the, of the pasta, I would say, you know, so... Yeah, it's, when, I mean, it's all pasta. Yeah. But, but it also, like, depends, like, you know, like, like sandwiches over here, like little rolls. I, in some areas around here, they will refer to them as hero, and on, and some of them they refer to as hoagies. So I think it depends on the area, on the state. What? Hoagies? 
Yeah. Like a big sub sandwich or something. Yeah, like a big sub, sub sandwich. No, I forgot you guys are fat. <laughs> Why? Check Blame the, the Italians. Uh, the Italians created these monstrosities. Yeah. The, 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 the link I put in that private chat. We don't got anything here done. Anything like here that is like similar to uh, to size. The biggest the biggest thing is like maybe south. Yeah, see. Something. Friends of the world, gather around. It's time to discuss an unforgivable food faux pas that all Americans. Because I was reading the eating. pitch on this product, and it could, I, I was baffled as to why they were saying noodles so much, but they were talking about pasta. I, I very I don't think I ever say noodles that way when I'm talking. See, I about thought pasta. you guys might know, but I mean, maybe it's not a like a mainstream well, thing. Well, I mean, I'm not going to discount that. Most of the the American public are fucking morons, so they might all call it noodles. <laughs> I mean, I I will not discount that, but no, I call it if I'm going to an Italian joint to eat some food, I'm gonna say I want the pasta. I'm not gonna ask yeah, that's, the noodle course. Because when you I was what? when I was writing I the story, say, I, I was say, sorry sorry to interrupt. When I, I I would say that if you're if you're for example like eating a soup or a, like a, a broth type of like a dish. Then you can say that 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 you are like consuming like noodles with it, but as far as like you know the a pasta is more like a, you know like a, how can I say a, a sauce a sauce with the, with meat those those type of those type of thing you know yeah it's yeah. just it's pasta but when I was writing the story I was like oh she's done high protein pasta but on nowhere on the site was the word pasta written and I was like have, have I have I have I not understood this correctly and I then I went think that maybe it has to do with the fact that pasta comes like in different shapes and names and sizes and stuff like that so maybe it also because like typically noodles to me it's always like you know those long thin ones uh, yeah it is it that, is like, that, yeah. that that's but definitely. then I'm like uh, they but have I different types of pasta is noodles too I, I heard it a few times <laughs> I think the big question would be spaghetti versus noodles. I've always called it like spaghetti yeah. the long. Well, spaghetti is a type of of pasta, so because noodles there's like um, many many different types of like noodles. Yeah, well, just like there's many types of pasta, so spaghetti is one one type of. So if you have a pasta extruder, yeah. like you can extrude through a bigger, wider diameter uh, hole that the pasta goes through. Whereas if you're going to make fettuccine, that's thinner, it's not tubular, and it's it's flat. Um, then you get in all like the crazy ass pasta shapes where it's, I mean, you've got it either way and it's got a hole through the middle of it. So it's a hollow pasta and all that other kind of stuff. All, all, almost like makes me want to look up the definition of noodles and, and pasta and if they have any similarities. There we go. More, more importantly, a, a lot of Americans call pasta noodles, <laughs> regardless of the shape. Yes. That's what threw me off. When I was trying to write the story, I was just not under. I knew I felt like I was missing something, and this is a, a fun fact for me. Well, it, it, it's not just a fun fact. If you think about it, it like you, you're writing a story, right? So it depends on what you call it. You eat a pasta or noodles. So say, for example, you're calling pasta noodles. In some regions, people might actually misunderstand you. Yeah. I, as far as I know, you would call it pasta everywhere. But the, like I said, her. The new brand they have different types so they have the spiral um with like a different cheese and then the they have call it what's that what does the brand call it the brand itself the brand calls all of it noodles it's all noodles oh, where is it made it's american oh really yeah and the shape That's what... of, uh, and the shape of it is what like more like spaghetti so they have like the the mac and cheese so like the little semicircle thingies yeah, there it is. There. Look, right at the top of Goodles, it says noodles, gooder. And clearly, on the no, she's not American based on gooder, but not being an actual yeah. word. I mean, understand that it's not entirely her. It's her. It's kind of like Zoa. It's yeah. not the rocks. It's the rock and like three. She's teamed up with like several. Face, right? I don't know. She's not necessarily a face. She's barely related to it. It's just it's her and three like CPG kind of veterans or something like people. She's not the owner of the company. She's like a co-founder. 
Yeah, I so lived in Israel, and I remember in Israel it was referred as pasta too. So that's uh, yeah. I, I don't think that the fact that where she's from is they would have obviously marketed the hell out of this for America. It's not. Yeah, but like if you go to the site, it's just the, not pasta. For the the mac and cheese, sometimes I'll hear some people say call them cheese noodles. So yeah, what the hell is that? I don't know. It's people are dumb. But again, so, so BuzzFeed said, "Hey, if BuzzFeed said it, you've got." <laughs> <laughs> that's my uh <laughs> okay the official definition any of various flour and egg food preparations of italian origin made of thin unleavened dough and produced in a variety of forms usually served with a sauce and sometimes stuffed noodle a narrow strip of unleavened egg dough that has been rolled thin and dried boiled and served alone or in soups casseroles oh, etc. interesting a ribbon shaped pasta etc oh a ribbon-shaped pasta. So, a noodle is a type of pasta. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I thought, I thought I thought the noodles were invented by the Chinese and then the Italians kind of adopted it and tweaked it from there. Hmm. I mean, I mean, in reality, it's basically the same thing, but um, yeah. it, it can be a little bit, I'm not saying misleading, um, you know, just people are used to call like to me when it when it comes to mac and cheese, I always think pasta. I don't, I never think. Either. Yeah, I always yeah. call pasta. Yeah, I always. So, you know, for to some people, <laughs> it can be a little bit. I think. I, I mean, I'm not an expert when it comes to you know noodles and pasta, especially you know in in healthy food and stuff like that. But uh, this might be a little bit misleading because if I didn't see the packaging or anything like that. And I heard about the product. In my mind, I would be picturing noodles, you know, as <laughs> Asian food. Yeah, see, they also they call it the shirataki noodles. When they kind of look like a pasta, but I guess they could be noodles too. I mean, either way, I feel I'm, I'm glad yeah, that right. unanimous, unanimously we decided it's not it's not noodles. Yeah, it's so the pasta. noodle pasta the woman is is wrong. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll message you on Instagram. Oh, <laughs> hey. Know. Wait, send her an invite to come debate us on the show about the, which one is <laughs> which is proper, pasta or noodles. Hey, if you have a spare two hours on a, on a Saturday, do you mind? You want to increase the traction in the uh, the profile of sitting, your noodle brand? Sitting with a bunch of morons and talking. Yeah, about whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> let's 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 not insult ourselves here. Yeah, We're yeah, high performing individuals. So we can boost our popularity. Yeah, I'll say, look, we'll help your brand. <laughs> we have a lord on the channel. It's uh, yes, it'll be a great conversation. We we are we are the real game changers. Absolutely. Well, although actually, I found uh, remember that plant based uh, well not plant based the animal free whey protein that was in that ice cream a while back. Yes. Yeah, I remember you telling us about that. Oh so, yeah. So they're putting that in a protein powder. And they explain the process in which uh, the whole thing is it works. Mm -hmm. So apparently they've taken the DNA from a cow and they've applied it to microflora. And they have these machines that then can somehow get milk and whey from the plant, or from the microflora. And... This was the most interesting thing is because they reached out to me and they said that anything that uses this animal free way, they don't want it to be referred to as plant based or vegan. So the plant based reason is because it's from microflora and they said it's not technically like plant plant. Right. And I was like, Hold okay, on. I can understand that. Hold on, but it's, but it's taken from cow, right? No, no, no. It uses, so they've they've i don't know somehow they've put the dna of a cow in microflora so somehow. it can't be so it can't be no 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 so here so, okay so it's not it's not an animal there's no animals used in the process whatsoever but yeah. the reason they don't call it vegan is because it gives off the idea that it's uh dairy free or lactose free but because yeah. they've taken the dna from the cow Mm -hmm. That the milk and the whey produced by the microflora is indeed does indeed have lactose. Yeah. So it's it's vegan in the sense that you're not 
doing any harm to animals or it's got no animals involved. But they didn't want to give the idea that the it's also lactose free, which is a common thing with vegan things. I thought it was phenomenally interesting. It is. Uh, is it sustainable or scalable on a large platform? And is it how does it take? Go to. Uh, is it probably not nowadays, especially now? Yeah. Perfect. Perfectday.com. Perfect day. Yeah, it's okay. the company that makes it, and they've kind of partnered with a few. Okay. But yeah, there's a protein brand coming out with it, and I was very intrigued. But I thought it. I thought it was interesting that you couldn't necessarily say it's vegan. How much? How much this phenomenon will cost? Oh, dude! Wow. They're releasing it in like these small boxes. Wow, yeah, that, that's that's the thing. So you I'm know? like, it's, it's gonna be pricey. It's gonna be fucking pricey as hell. Yeah, but so you also have to understand. Like maybe in catering. Like, maybe in probably like fifty years or something, it will be super cheap. But now. Yeah, but it's not that many people using it, <laughs> yeah, so it might take. True. It might take popularity to do it. Yeah, that's but the thing. If With the increase of the demand, then yeah. will probably the price will go down. But yeah, now it's. I not thought easy. it was. Uh, is it? But yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah. Pete, feel Animal free to hold free. the comment section all you want to so we, we don't have any more. I'm okay with 80s infomercials, though. 80s and 90s infomercials were the shit. Um, here, let me pull up that. Uh, and then, I don't know what the hell floppies are. <laughs> floppies for everyone's Christmas? What the fuck is a floppy? Wasn't that, Wait, was that, it, that fucking... Was it that the hair cutting thing? thing? Hair cutting thing, yeah. No, I thought that was the, the vacuum suck. Yeah, that, that's what the it is. vacuum suck. That's, a, that's what it was called on Wayne's World. I recall what he's referring to, but I don't think it was called the vacuum suck. I mean, no, that's, no, that's what Wayne's World called it in the movie, or the suck back, or the vac suck, something like that. Uh, flop. That's what it's called. That's what it really was called. Floppy. No, it was a floby. That's what the, it was. Floby was the thing that it was called. Yeah, but the, he's giving you the he's giving you the plural. There you go. That's. Maybe so. Yeah, yeah. that's the only, the only one. thing that came up when I, I typed in floppy. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, I thought you'd find that perfect day thing interesting because yeah. I, when I was reading it, they're like, oh, this is how we did it. We just took the DNA from a cow. I'm like, how the fuck do you do that? Water. I think if you roll up, at the, there's a link to the page somewhere. Process. There Process. you go. Our journey yeah, started with a simple question. You what know makes what's, milk milk? You know what's fascinating is that, you know, these guys are like thinking outside the box. That was, that's what's cool yeah. about, you know, they're not trying to like manufacture the, their protein like on a standard, you know, basis that are like known nowadays and they're like trying to do something different, which I can, this is, which this I can truly appreciate, that, but... That, that tripped me up here. I'm like, okay. So to create an animal-free version of milk protein, we simply had to introduce animal genes to an origin. So it's not animal-free. You you needed to have an animal initially. No, read down. Read down. The, read huh? down. the actual we got the genes be from digitally published scientific databases. Yeah, for us, was, we got the genes from. Food. Yeah. <laughs> So they just typed in the code into a machine and like they had a 3D printer like manifest some DNA sequences? You know, like when you watch those sci-fi movies like Inception, and then they're like, oh yeah, we can go into people's dreams. I was like, well, okay, if that's true, then we can do this. Yeah. This is kind of like that that's for me. Scary. Like, yeah. You can somehow take this and put it into this. Dude, mushrooms are freaking awesome. We chose microflora and we used fungi to make our proteins because they have a long history of safe use making ingredients in many foods you eat today. And because microflora yeah. are particularly good at producing animal proteins, we gave our animal flora the genetic blueprint corresponding to whey protein, enabling it to produce real milk protein, identical to what cows produce. Now as our flora graze on simple plant-based inputs, they naturally produce milk protein. This is So when we is, all start growing a fourth ear or something like that in a couple this years- This is amazing, isn't it, to me? I like- It's crazy. Yeah, I like that kind of stuff. I'm like, when I read this, I was like, how have you done all of this? And you're in like two products or three products, whatever the fuck. Yeah. Go off in large fermentation tanks at the optimal temperature, pH, and salinity. 
Following a strict cleaning regimen for our tanks and ensuring they're a closed system, isolated from the outside world, we can ensure we're making some of the purest, safest milk protein in the world. Animal-free milk proteins are identical to the ones found in cow's milk. They are grass that's by the FDA. Good. Damn. Okay, so the, the US FDA is signing off on it. Well, that's fine. Okay. That's so we can't crazy. have DMAA, but we can have genetically produced, Modified. synthetically made... Uh, microflora piss. Yeah, cup protein. <laughs> it's crazy. Jesus Christ. I was reading that and I'm like, how do I simplify this? With, with, I was like, you know what? I'll just say, look, they took the DNA from cows and put it to microflora. Boom. Yeah. You got milk. Good this is insane. God. Yeah, it is. It is but it's like it, you they've coined a new term from this by saying animal free, yeah. which encompasses. I guess the the point of plant based and the point of vegan, but they just don't want to use those terms. Hmm. I feel like, I mean, hopefully because they've put it in a pro, in a in a protein powder. Um, Natrive, Natrive is the brand. Uh, yeah. It's Canadian, I think. I feel like hopefully it opens like the floodgates because you need a few people using it to make animal free seem equivalent yeah. to like vegan. Well, if Which they again, want to send me like a tub to try out, I'd be happy to, to put it through the ringer. Oh, I'm going to buy it as soon as I can. It's, <laughs> I think it's in January, February. Okay. But like when I was reading that, I was like, okay, we can take DNA and put it into other things. Sweet. Yeah. That's magical. That's a shitload more scientific than you know, a pre-workout. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Yeah, um... We got actually a few messages uh, regarding a few things that happened this uh, this week. Uh, I just have like a little list, and obviously, Ratcon uh, Blackstone situation that's a huge thing that you know worth discussing. Yeah. Um, also, Canadian bodybuilder um, Zane Watson has been arrested, also on a 32 million, I believe, or 35 million bust in. Uh, Marijuana and there was cocaine and guns and shit like that involved yeah, as well. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. You saw the pictures. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's it's insane. I don't know how they were able to to run such huge operation. I mean, that's like a multi-million dollar business. That was awesome. absolute insanity. And uh, you know, I don't know if it's, I don't think it's related to, um, to 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 you know to to supplements in any way. But, you know, I got a few messages regarding Steve Kuklo and what's going on also with him. What's um, going on? Uh, well, basically, this is a second or third time that he was caught cheating now on a second or third wife. And he was um, actually very, he wasn't caught. It was actually interesting because he basically sort of bragged about it because he was posting pictures with another woman pretty much on the internet and tagging her as well so he was like go fuck yourselves guys i do whatever i want um so you know it, it's funny because i actually got a few messages like you know what's my opinion on it uh which is interesting because i don't have an opinion on it it's his personal life and you know, whether we agree or we don't agree, people can do whatever they want. And personal life, I believe, is personal life. I mean, obviously, we can talk about it and express our own opinions, how we feel about it. But um, at the end of the day, you know, as uh, as fans of bodybuilding, I think it's uh, it's important to see what's on stage. Like, you know, I said many, many, many times that Sean Ray's physique is one of my all-time favorites. But Sean Ray as a person is probably one of, the biggest pieces of shit you'll ever meet. So, you know, you have to separate personal and business or sport. Um, sometimes a great athlete can be not exactly a perfect role model when it comes to real life. So it's, it's very hard to judge because you never know what's going on in people's personal life. Well, you yeah, know? it's the same thing. I don't want to hear like an athlete or a movie star get like, I'm watching what you're doing on the field because I respect your athletic talent. I don't need you to stand on a podium and give me your political insight or your social Johnson okay. Johnson. Same thing. Like the personal life goes the same with it. I'm watching you for one reason. I don't give a shit about anything else. I want to I see agree. you throw a ball really hard, hit a ball really far, kick it, do something to it, beat the shit out of another athlete. The second you start getting out of your lane and going in other stuff, I don't. You've you've lost me at that point. 
I, I don't yeah, give no, two I shits. With you. I mean, it, and it's always like, you know, it's always fun to discuss these things and to talk shit about people. Let, let's, let's face it, we all gossip, you know, we all discuss things and we can express our opinions. But at the end, especially, you know, personal life, you know, it, uh, I've, I've talked shit about Price Plow many times, but the only reason is it has nothing to do with personal life of Mike and Ben. It has to do with the industry itself. You know, that's the reason why I liked uh, Lucas's post so much, because he just expressed his opinion on a situation that involves the supplement industry, so so to speak, and uh, and him being a fan of bodybuilding. So that was perfect because it was a personal opinion, which, by the way, Lucas, I think it was a great post and I agree with you. But uh, personal life with certain people, I'm not saying that we can't talk about it. Of course we can. You know, that's all right. We can talk shit all we want. But we don't know the ins and outs. We just we just don't know. We don't know personal life. We don't know what's going on behind closed doors, and uh, that's uh, that's very hard to judge somebody, especially for me, because I I don't know. I you know there are so many things that uh, people go through in life. You know uh, that uh, for us to be ju the judge and jury, I think it's also a very very thin and fine line and very dangerous line. Because look what happened to Sean Rodney. You know, people were judging, and I'm not saying like you know, may he rest in peace. Maybe, maybe he did rape the girl. It's very possible, but there is 50% chance that he didn't. And until we know all the facts, you know, you can't. Really, I mean, you can, but I guess we shouldn't judge somebody based on he said, she said, because the uh, you know, take a perfect example. Um, um, I actors right today all you have to do is just say that somebody raped somebody or somebody uh did something bad drugs etc et or as a racist or something and, like that you're completely or, unfounded uh, and, yeah you know i mean look at robert downey jr i remember when what when was it 20 years ago or something like that when he was arrested you know being drugged and fucking the living on the street or something like that he spent time in jail and stuff if that happened today it would have been over. I mean, there is no bouncing back from that. That's pretty much, you know, you trashed, you 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 you, you destroyed. Yeah. But back then, um, you know, he was actually was able to uh, to, to to save his career. And you know, I mean, me being Jewish, uh, I didn't really enjoy Mel Gibson going on a anti-Semitic, you know, rant. I yeah. didn't like it, even though Mel Gibson is one of my favorite actors as an actor again. Yeah. Uh, as a person, I wasn't a big fan, but Mel Gibson was the one who actually helped Robert Downey Jr. He came to his rescue. He helped him out. It's a very, very uh, known fact. So we can't turn our backs just because somebody said something about somebody mm -hmm. in personal life without having any proof because it's very, very dangerous. And you can literally destroy somebody's life. And mm -hmm. that's just wrong. So I think like, you know, like in case of Zane Watson, he was arrested and <laughs> like Lucas said, I was fucked up operation. That shit was huge. If you look at pictures of the operation that they were running, I mean, they probably, <laughs> you know, they can put some of the multi-million supplement companies to shame. That was the serious, serious shit. Impressive. Yeah, yeah one, that, one picture of the, of the green stuff. That's like fucking winery. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah, it was like uh, it was like my garage. So just imagine, just just imagine. And he had like uh, three of those filled with with all kinds of, of of stuff. So yeah, including guns and so on. So yeah, man. Yeah, he was I running. Mean, he was, was running some serious operation down there. That that is that is something that you cannot argue and say like, oh, maybe he's innocent. Uh, no, he's not. <laughs> you know? that, that's. That's pretty much, nobody can argue with that. But I think that the more interesting topic uh, of discussion that probably has to do with the industry itself is uh, Blackstone uh, situation, which was going mm. on for years and years and years. And, you know, it, it's funny because I heard people obviously, you know, it, it, it's very interesting because when it comes to Blackstone and, and Radcon, or, you know, more specifically PJ and Aaron, there are those people who absolutely love them and there are those people who absolutely despise them um you know um, I, I happen to be one of those guys who is not a big fan uh but uh 
you know, more specifically, it has to do with what they've done. I mean, it was pretty clear that when the feds go after you and when you have so many counts and, uh, you know, you're pleading guilty, clearly there is enough evidence. So at this point, it's not a situation like it is with Sean Rodden where we don't know. In this case, we do know. And they clearly broke the law and they clearly broke the law in few different instances. The interesting discussion comes to uh, to the fact of how bad is it? And, uh, you know, do we, uh, is there any justification to the actions? And more importantly, and I think this is the question that's been popping out a lot. And I think rightfully so. If Aaron was clearly, and this is not defamation of character or an accusation, accusation has been done by the US government and he did plead guilty, which means he admitted. Um, the, the, the question comes to the credibility of Radcon, because if one person runs a clearly shady operation with one company and then he does run another company, you, can, you, you can't accuse, but you can definitely be suspicious as to will he be running an honest operation or not. So that's obviously one of the things. And the second thing is, you know, the term, uh, you know, what, what they facing in terms of how many years in prison when you when you're pleading guilty but you're still getting you know such severe punishment clearly if you wouldn't take the plea uh, plea agreement uh you would face a much much harsher punishment so at this point it's pretty much clear that you know it's been proven that they've been guilty but, uh, you know, this is definitely something that we can discuss. And I think that a lot of people want to hear like the truth about the supplement industry, because let's face it, Blackstone was on top of the world five, six years ago. I just had a half wing run in and say somebody was at the door. Uh, yeah, to, just to be for clarification for the listeners that may not be up to speed on this, this is when Aaron and PJ were still partners in Blackstone, and then Aaron left to go start Redcon One um, for millions of dollars. Blackstone Labs reached a plea agreement. So it's basically how much from 10 to 13 years in prison? Uh, uh, I, what, what I heard from uh, a source close to Blackstone, I'm obviously not going to name who it is, um, that uh, as far as I know, the plea agreement was that Aaron's going to face probably about five years in prison and a fine, and, and, and PJ, I believe, eight years and a fine. I mean, again, I'm not saying that that's the exact number, yeah, but that's what, that's, what, that's what I heard. But the thing is, is like, Lucas, like, if if you plead guilty and you accept, say, five years in prison, that means that if you wouldn't plead guilty, you probably would be going to jail for a double that amount. Mm -hmm. uh, that the number, that amount. Oh so, yeah, hundred percent. So it's so it's, pre it's pretty bad. I mean, that's a lot of years, regardless. Yeah, man, like five years, especially like I don't know in which prison he will if if he will go if if they will go to prison how much in in which prison they will you know have to be you know because <laughs> here in poland when you go to prison <laughs> the conditions are are not fun and you don't have I a playstation you don't have a playstation or a tv or like any any things like that you know so i, I think that uh, you know because they you know obviously didn't murder anyone or rape anyone or anything like that I don't think they're going to go like with murderers and rapists and, and, you know, those guys. I think it's going to be probably more like, you know, with people that um, cheated on taxes and stuff like that. So I think mm -hmm. it's not going to be like a maximum security prison. I think it's going to be something easier. But nevertheless, prison is prison. It's still bad. Is this one of those things where like they like men have heard stories of people being like, oh, you can do one year in jail and then four at home or you can do like, you know, stay there overnight and go home to like, yeah. is this one of those things? Like, cause I know that people like high up can or have not really. So basically done. not spending, not, not spending time in prison, but like having, uh, no, I don't think so. Can I say? 
you know. Well, uh, no, I've just heard of other people, but I don't really. Being restricted at home. Yeah. 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 Have, a, this, this have a bracelet or something, prison. maybe. Those kind of thing. Yeah, th this is going to be prison. Like, I know of somebody who was uh, arrested for steroids for distribution, and um, he had a plea agreement, um, and he was sentenced, I believe, to two years. But he said to me, like, you know, because obviously, again, he wasn't a murderer or anything like that. Uh, he said that the prison was very light in terms of, like, they did have, I think, like, access to many things, even computer in a way or stuff like that. Like, it was very light, but it still was a prison. And uh, he served, I think, out of two years, he served maybe a year and a half or something like that. And uh, then was released. But again, in comparison, his charges were nothing compared to these charges. These charges are very, very hefty. I mean, there is like 13 or 14 counts. And, you know, there is distribution, there is manufacturing illegal substances. And uh, there is the worst, I think I was told, uh, is the money laundering. When there is money laundering involved, uh, that's the one of the worst ones. I think that they will do a few years for sure. Hmm. You can know, you more say, important. Can, you say, can you say something about the fees? How much they would? I think pay? that. Uh, I it think says that, two million and three million. Yeah, two million, three million. It's it's a lot. It's a lot. It's nothing. I don't think yeah. that's much for 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 Aaron. Yeah. Well, you know, th this goes back to Blackstone, so you know it's a much smaller operation, but it's it's yeah. just fine. Uh, you know, it's it's a hefty fine regardless. You know, I'm sure that Aaron makes a lot more than that right now, and it seems like they're not going after Ratcon. They're not even going after Blackstone because Blackstone, I believe, will remain in business if I'm not mistaken. It's just going to be, I think, ran by high tech. Yeah, as far as I knew, it yeah. had like. Redcon one was not really related or connected outside yeah, of just being the yeah, fact that maybe you guys maybe you guys know is, is PJ still still involved with uh, Blackstone Labs? He's like a co-owner of the brand, or he is already like you know dropped the uh, his previous position and he's just like the face, or I would say like. Uh, Brand ambassador of the brand. I, I was told. I was told two different things. I was told by one person that he is a co-owner, but uh, it's mostly still run by high tech. I think Jared has the majority. Yeah. But by another source, I was told that PJ is not the owner anymore and just kind of like the face off and just kind of like on board, kind of like you know Gaspari used to be when he lost the company and kind yeah. of. You know, one of yeah. those guys. But I think it doesn't really matter. I think that you know the brand is definitely gone. I mean, the brand's going to get hurt, and uh, regardless, uh, Ratcon will continue. I'm pretty sure. But to say that they're not going to take any hit or not going to be influenced by it whatsoever, I think it's ridiculous. Because you know, when the owner is accused of uh, shady operation, owning another company somehow it has to influence the company. I think they're going to be perfectly fine because they're so big right now. So yeah. it's not that they're going to lose business and go out of business. It's not the case. Yeah. Uh, it's more like, you know, their reputation and what they've done. Because, right. you know, if I accuse you of something and you basically plead guilty, that means you're admitting that you have done it. And, you know, down, now it's, uh, it's right out there. But the thing is, it's like, if I was to do something shady and you were about to do business with me, I mean, you would be very, very careful. Agreed. So that's the thing I, I thought was interesting. Uh, that they had Recon One had that um, that big investment group come in not that long ago, and this was like this was obviously after because this is the result of the the case. This case obviously was was it last year, or the year before? I can't remember when. Oh, no, kinda... at least three years ago. Yeah, it's been around for a while. Yeah, the case started, yeah. we, we, the, the case started I believe, I mean, the pandemic is 2009, well, early. Oh, yeah, before then. I think this is like early 2019, might be yeah. even 2018. Yeah, see, I always thought it was interesting because when the investment group come in, like, I mean, they're not, 
morons. They're not like these are guys who have a shit ton of money and they would have come in full well doing their research, knowing exactly the ins and outs of everything that that involved. And they still invested a lot of money. So I would have thought that if they were to take any kind of knock or hit, it would have been back when it came to light. I don't think, I think maybe it might affect them now. I don't know. They are they absolutely tell because giant. You are right. I think also the Walmart deal came after. Yeah, all of that stuff came after. Yeah. Which and these are these are these are absolutely mammoth corporations that would would if there was a slight chance in hell that anything was being done wrong. Yeah. Or they wouldn't have touched it at all. Yeah. Like Walmart cool. giving them shelf space is not like. Right. Yeah, well, I would have thought. I'm pretty sure part of the plea agreement is that uh, Radcon is untouchable because, I mean, you can, even if you are cutting a deal, a U.S. accused, you can still give uh, your conditions as well. You can say, like, okay, I'll let yeah. you this and that, but, uh, you know, sign a waiver or something like that that you're not going to touch my other company and it's not going to be involved. And if that is the case, I'm pretty sure behind closed door, any investor or something like that had to have some kind of a reassurance that the company is safe. Yeah. Do you still do you still think that if if this situation will like move forward, you know, and you know they will go to prison? Do you think that it will in evolve like? It will impact. Sorry, uh, sorry for my English. It will impact the you know the recon business as far as like you know the bigger corporations. You know, such as like you know Walmart and so on. I think that's what they were just saying. I don't. I don't. Walmart. No, I, don't, not I think if this. it was gonna. I, I think if it was gonna impact them, like it would have happened when it came out. Yeah. Like, what I mean. What I, I, I mean, what I mean by that, that, for example, like Walmart say, okay, uh, we don't want to have. We don't want to. You know get involved anymore with Aaron's business so we are not gonna stop you know his brand uh, they did know about the case before but you, you do actually make an interesting point and here is why because the thing is is that when the deal with Walmart happened um, they were already accused the case was already ongoing mm -hmm. but the problem yeah. is, is that I know for a fact and I know that very very well it's a it's a fact that PJ was going around and Aaron, I mean a year or two ago, telling people that nothing's going to happen. You know that the lawyers. I mean PJ, I think even did an interview with uh, I think Dave Palombo, maybe somebody else. I actually watched it where he said that he's very confident that everything's going to be okay. Um, but the difference is is that it was you know they were accused and they were investigated kind of the same thing as Sean Rodden was like, for example, take you, right? So you don't have an opinion on Sean Rodden because you don't know the details. You don't know if he did it or not. You just, you know, as a smart individual and using common sense, you can't turn your back on Sean Rodden because you don't know, right? Mm -hmm. But you know that there was investigation. Some people turned their back on him and some people said that he's innocent. Both didn't know the facts. And they just made the they just made an assumption. You decided, okay, you know, I'm a fan of Sean Rodden. He's not proven guilty. It's just an investigation that isn't going on. However, yeah. if he was, if he admitted that he's guilty or he was proven to be guilty, I am hundred percent sure your opinion would have changed. Yeah, of course. So, so, so you know, Walmart got the deal when they were accused. And, you know, maybe the lawyers, maybe somebody else. Again, we're just speculating. I don't know. I'm just talking shit right now. Yeah, yeah, but of from, course. From, from, but from a common uh, sense of view, if I'm doing business with anyone on a bigger scale or a smaller scale, uh, you're, I'm doing business with you and you're accused of something, I can either say, well, fuck Lucas because he's a piece of shit. Or I can say, well, I believe Lucas is innocent. Or I can do the third thing is like until Lucas is proven that he's a piece of shit, I'm going to do business with him. But now, once you admit it that you're guilty or they prove that you're guilty, I might change my mind. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, good uh, point. It's a uh, summation of things. I had a, another brand owner just text me in the middle. They're watching this in the background. They texted me a couple minutes ago saying, of the 14 counts they were charged with, all but two of them were 
dropped as part of the plea agreement. So the two that they pleaded to, all the rest of those charges were dropped. So it started out as 14, um, but two are the ones that they're, I guess, they're copping to, and the rest of them are going to get dismissed as part of the plea agreement. So mm -hmm. it'll be interesting to see what happens. So that's what I was wondering, if it's one of those things that's going to, like, like, because, like, I know when they when you put things in headlines, you try and make it sound as salacious like, as possible. Yeah. Like thirteen years, is it? It's like, oh, it could actually be like two or one, right. or like five, and they serve it all at home. I don't know. That's what I was wondering. Like, yeah. I always see this stuff in media when so and so goes to jail for this, and yeah. then they're like, oh yeah, spend six months, the rest is home detention, and I was like, okay. Correct. Cool. Yeah. yeah, but you know what? If the sentence is, for example, and this is just an example, if the sentence is five years, there is no way that you're going to do one and you're going to do four years at home. That's just not going to happen. You know, typically at home, it's either 50% or a lesser amount, but it's yeah. never going to be that majority of your sentence is going to be at home. That's just not the case. So, you know, it depends like how long they're going to have to go for. And then the, just the, I've never heard about house arrest being longer than uh, the sentence itself. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Mm. All right, keep the uh, comments and questions rolling, guys. We're, we're backlogged on some, so we're gonna rip through them, uh, but keep everything and anything coming our way. Uh, Paul, Lord Shane, first of his name, ruler of the Kiwi Kingdom and the realm of Stacked, supreme arbiter <laughs> of all supplement news. Outstanding, Zandandita. I'm gonna change that. I'm going to put that as my uh, stacks Instagram uh, description, profile description. I think you should. That from, is outstanding. From now on, Robert needs to refer like this. <laughs> yeah, there's no more baby every, face. Every time, every time, every time it's we Lord. start a podcast, Lord Shane. Yes, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to remember all of Lord this. Shane baby face. I didn't pay 25 bucks to be called Shane, okay? <laughs> Lord <laughs> baby face Shane. <laughs> Ben, just picked up Double Impact V2 and Time Cop. I need Robbie to stop with the awesome products. My wallet is hurting. Uh, tried Robbie's barbecue sauce. It's incredible. A little thin in consistency, but it is amazing on chicken. Okay. Pete, pasta is the main term, but there are different types. Elbow, ziti, spaghetti, noodles. Noodles are pasta. Pasta is a general term. Elbow macaroni is pasta but not noodles. I just wouldn't have called every type of pasta noodles. This is what baffles me. Yeah, I think that that's a, that, that's a misunderstanding that we meant that, you know, ever, yeah, I, this is not what we said. We didn't say like one yeah. or the other. We yeah. just, hey man, pasta it's all pasta to me. Yeah. If I go to yeah. a pasta restaurant, I'm getting different types of pasta. If I go to a noodle right. restaurant, it's probably going to be like a, like an Asian cuisine type thing. Yeah. But in this case, everything is pasta and it's called noodles. <laughs> cheese noodles are mac and cheese and <clears throat> macaroni. There you go. Brooke. First time we're hearing from Brooke today. What's going on, Brooke? How are you? Uh, any great black blah, blah, any great Black Friday supplement deals to watch out for? Shane, are you gonna be blowing up the feed on Thursday and Friday doing all the uh I mean, Black Friday sales? The only the only one, the only one that I coincidentally know of is uh, Redcon ones because they've got. I mean, of all the brands that do Black Fridays, you yeah. have to admit this. This is absolutely insane. Well, yeah, you get half their product lineup and you spend like fifty dollars. They send you. It's like half price. Things. But if you think yeah. about it, Redcon has the Black Friday every day of the year. Yeah, that's the thing. Like they do bogos because I remember the first year they did bogo and everyone was like, "Oh my god!" This, and then. They started doing bogos frequently, but then they had to step it up for Black Friday. So they then make up for it with like, like pretty much an entire wardrobe if you spend over two hundred dollars. And I just, I just, I, I just know it's like a cliche or like a meme from supplement users. It's just like that they almost pay you to buy this stuff at this point yeah, exactly. on Black Friday. It's ridiculous. You know what? You know what's the funniest thing right now is that it's not. Now it's not like just a Black Friday oh, or like yeah. Black <clears throat> or Black Week. <laughs> now it's like a Black Month, basically. You yeah, know? man. <clears throat> Everyone started the 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 new Raise Energy drink, the mystery flavor. 
yeah. they were like, oh, we're going to launch it for Black Friday. Oh, it turns out we're launching it a week early and we're going to start our Black Friday sale early. And I was like, the yeah. fuck, guys? It's, we it's people I've been sharing a few. We had promised you to start our sales like two weeks ago. And we are like already like smashing like tons of tons of sales and we just we just getting started and that's like a distributor to... thing though, isn't it? Yeah, but like back in the days there wasn't like that that much, you know, of uh like of yeah. like Friday deals, you know. We were just like, you know, gearing up, but due to pandemic and so on, we just decided to like give the opportunity for the partner, you know, especially Due to the fact that there oh, yeah. wasn't any any expos or anything like that, so we are trying to like pick up the momentum, you know. Yeah. That that that'll be another beast, my protein. Yeah, fifty. It'll probably be like ninety five percent off or something. Yeah, well, yeah. Rolls yeah. Around. Like like you go to, you go to Russia and like typically you know athletes get a discount code right like 10, 15 percent. That's a standard for any athlete by most brand. When it comes to my protein, they fucking discount codes are forty percent. <laughs> 40 percent so then you have 55 percent which i think is kind of high i expected it to be like 70 75 percent you know that would be more accurate for my product well no, that's what they're doing right now i can bet you any money you yeah. like it'll get it'll be like 99 percent off come oh, black friday or something. <laughs> you know what it always like i always wondered like uh do people take into i know everybody wants to save 100 percent. you know that that's fine and not everybody understands, uh, you know, um, the ingredients and the dosages and whatnot, and which is fine too, because you know we drive cars. Uh, well, except Lucas, and we <laughs> not, not not all of us knows everything about cars. You know, most men pretend, oh, I know this, I know that, but the truth is, not everybody is very very knowledgeable. Okay. I always admit, I'm not knowledgeable at all. Like, you know, this yeah. is a good car. Okay, cool. But, uh, you know, when it, when it comes to prices, you're getting a discount 50, 60, 70, 80% or whatever. Don't you wonder for a split second how much that product costs and how shitty it is if you're getting such substantial, insane, you know, uh, percentage code. You're just grabbing it because it's cheaper and you're thinking you're getting a deal. But do you really think that you're getting it for free? Because you're not getting it for free. They still profit. And if they profit in giving you 75, 80% and they still profit from it, when they charge you, say, for example, 100%, which they don't have to, uh, I mean, they make an absolute killing and you're basically a sucker who is paying for a shitty product. And I'm yet to see, like sometimes people do wonder, I have to admit, there are there is some intelligence still left in this world. Not much, but there is. But for most part, like, oh, I'm getting a deal. No, you fucking idiot. You're paying for shit, and they're still making money. You know, just just mm -hmm. think about it. Like, but you know what? It doesn't matter because it's like, it it, it they still not gonna listen. They're still gonna go and like, oh, look, I got a deal. No, you didn't get a deal. You just yeah. fucking got played. And you have, and I'm not talking specifically, of course, about my protein. There is other companies who like on a daily basis giving you 20, 30 percent off. Okay, which is nice. And then comes Black Friday, which for some companies every other fucking day, and you're getting 50%. And then comes the real Black Friday, and you're getting 70, 80%. And you're like thinking, like, do you, they have staff, they have to pay rent, they have to pay for marketing, they just have to pay for advertising that they're giving you 70% off. Do you really think they're not making money? How much does the fucking product cost? If you're getting it pretty much for nothing and they're still making money. Yeah. I don't think it's a question of whether or not they're making money. I think no one, like, I, I, I got on Recall One's Black Friday deal last year. I paid for it. I don't think that, and not for a second, I'm like, how much money did they actually make? I don't really care. All I know is the product usually costs 50 and now it's 25. I mean, it would be, same, it would be the same with the pollen. Like, if let's just say it was like 65. And I got my fat discount and it came down to like 50. But then for Black Friday, it was 40. I wouldn't sit there and say, oh, Apollo's still making money. I would sit there and be like, well, that's no, $10 no, better that, than... That's not what I'm implying. Only fat I, discounts. I, 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 yeah. I, 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 I'm happy when any business is successful and making money. That's fine. You know, I don't think... I, I think I'm people don't care. Sometimes Plus, you're you not know, doing the, the, the kind of deals like, you know, every goddamn month. 
just like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I just like once per year, you know. That's yeah. why that's yeah. why you can you can you can offer like a five discount, let's say you know twenty percent off for for example, like you know before Black Friday or something like that, or for like L listen, I don't I know Robic Robic's birthday or for example to celebrate uh, Robic's rat or something like that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, what, what I mean is, is that this is this is what I'm implying. You know, I was always transparent about everything we do. Like, for example, I just got, you know, we we getting isolated and we start selling it next week, right? So uh, when we were quoted a price, it was already pretty high because protein prices isolate. Well, not actually almost every protein, except maybe vegan plant protein is not that expensive, but uh, protein prices are through the roof right now, and. Uh, it, it seems like, you know, um, we paid, I don't remember how much we paid, but we already paid a substantial amount uh, when we placed the order, I believe, in March or something. Right now, uh, we, order, we want it because we know it's going to sell very well. I mean, the, the taste is fucking insane. But not even that. A pond right now is a hot brand and people do buy it. So we wanted to make sure with the lead times and everything else that we order it before we even released it. We wanted to reorder another batch. So we placed the order. The, do you know how much is isolate right now? We were quoted. We were quoted for isolate. 30? What's that? I was just going to say 30, but I have no idea. I think no, it's no, what, no, 17 no. or $18 for a two pounder? 20. Damn. 20. So uh, it actually depends on the flavoring system. So it was like between 19 and $20. So you got expensive goes up there. Yeah, but, but the thing is, is like when you add to that cost, the cost of labels. So we do use expensive labels. So you add the cost of labels, then you add the cost of transportation, then you add the cost of obviously marketing and, run, and operations and everything else. You have a very, very, very expensive product. And that's just the cost. That's just the cost. So yes, you know, typically uh, retail value is forty. Well, forty you won't find today. Typically, it's about forty-five to fifty dollars right now at retail isolate. When they sell to stores, like I know, for example, today it's about twenty-eight dollars. And that's based on what they paid a couple of months ago. New one, I assure you, is going to be more expensive than that. So it's going to be roughly maybe thirty dollars retail uh, wholesale price to retailers. You know, so when you take that in, into account, and you have a forty-five, fifty dollar isolate, now you're giving a discount twenty percent, twenty-five percent, or thirty percent, or something like that. Your profit margins are still there. You're still making money, but when you factor everything into account, how much it costs you, the storage, everything else, salaries, you know, every, I mean. You have a lot, a lot, a lot of expenses. It's not cheap to run something like that. And if it's quality, product, and I'm not defending right now a palm, I'm, I'm actually talking on behalf of good quality brands mm. that cannot do 70%. Can you imagine from $50, 70%, how much is it going to be? It's going to be about $20. That's a fucking cost. That's actually, you're losing money. You know, 60%, you're probably breaking even. 50% you're making dick. It's just you're not making any money. You're making very, very, very little. So, you know, and then obviously on Black Friday, people expect free shipping and free this. I'm just being honest and transparent right now. It, so what, what can you do if you're selling $40? Because typically, um, I don't know, maybe concentrate or something like that. Some crappy protein basically that is spiked. It costs $40. It's about 5 or $10 cheaper than isolate, right? But it's so cheap or cheaper, a lot cheaper than a quality like isolate, like casein, like egg protein. Do you know how much I was, I guess, you know, I can let the secret out. You know, I told chain about this. We're releasing egg protein, uh, hopefully around December. It was supposed to be kind of like, fuck you, everyone. We're releasing more kind of a thing. But do you know initially how much I was quoted for egg protein? I want you to take a wild guess. Because that protein is actually really fluctuates. Twenty five. Twenty six. I actually remember you telling me, but I could not remember that number. Yeah. <laughs> and anything, I thought egg protein would have been cheaper. I figured that was uh, well, dirty. No, it fluctuates like a bitch. So the latest one that I was quoted, I was able to negotiate a better deal, but trust me, not much better. Twenty six dollars again at the label, at the transportation, and you have an almost thirty dollar product. 
almost $30 product that people do expect to pay a little bit less than isolate. So now market value, you cannot, you cannot push it for the same price that you're pushing isolate right now. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's just literally impossible. So I'm not saying that, you know, we should, as a consumer, go like, oh, how much is the company making? It's not the point that I've made. I ma I'm making the point is if you're getting such substantial discount, and it is well-known fact right now that the market is through the roof. Everything is so fucking expensive. Everything. I'm not talking about just, you know, um, supplements. If everything is so, so fucking expensive, it's not about how much the company makes. It's about that you are sold a shitty product. That's the only way that the company is able to profit and continue going. And if you're getting such a substantial discount and you're putting it inside your body, that's the only thing that I'm implying. Because, like, take for example the car industry. Um, um, a car, an average car, uh, a lease is insane right now. My friend just got uh, for his mother uh, a Lexus uh, RX 350, which is, I mean, it's uh, on a luxury side, but it's not exactly Porsche or anything like that, a Lamborghini. Yeah. So the average price, because my, my Lexus, I was paying about $500 for a lease. $500 a month, which is an average price for Lexus. That's normal. He just got the same car that I have for his mom. Take a guess how much he paid. 900 900 for exactly the same car. Exactly the same car. Uh, exactly the, that's just the situation that we have. So when you're getting a huge, like Lucas says, fat discount, you know, it's nice to get a discount. We all want something cheaper and we all, all want to save but sometimes the question arises, like if somebody sells to me a product that I think is good and the retail value of it is 10 bucks, but I'm getting it for a dollar or two, I mean, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that the company obviously is still making money. But if they're able to give me such a substantial profit and there are other products in that category that cost $8, $7, $10, $12, but I'm paying a dollar or two, Am I really getting a quality product? And that's without me even knowing the ingredients, without me even understanding, you know, what comes to it with the quality and everything else. So that's, uh, I think that, that that's a little bit, you know, people are celebrating these huge sales, but sometimes they come with a price because you're lacking something else. Agreed. Agreed. Simon says, sorry, I'm late. Hi, all. Hey, hey Simon. Simon. Here you go. Saeed, can you ask a question? Yes, you may. Ask away. Anything you got. Doesn't have to be supplement or bodybuilding related. It can be anything. That's a nice picture. Agree with Lucas. I always find it very fascinating and the science amazes me. That's in reference to the uh, animal free dairy protein that is. Yeah. <coughs> the microflora milking. Yes. Now, he's, <laughs> now he's complimenting me. Smart. Hey, 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 hey. hey. <laughs> Street is, street is, street is. Look up, did my you boy. send him a, a text message that you're giving him something for free? Yeah. I'm kidding. <laughs> no fat discounts <laughs> from my end. Welcome to the uh, only podcast with the undisputed brand of the year on it. <laughs> there we go. Uh, Chris, did you guys talk about Uncle Eddie in Inside Edition yet? I have no idea what he's talking that about. about. No. Do you have a link or something that you can point us to uh, to what you're referring, Chris? Because uh, I'm uh, kind of confused at the moment. Yeah, me too. Mad Devils. Thoughts on SNS? Optimized T looks like a stellar formula. Well, let's yes, see. it is. Most of the stuff, by and large, by SNS is is really yeah. quality. So if I want, I just wanted to say, when you see a brand SNS, just buy it. Yeah, their, their stuff is really, really good. Just, just simply buy it. Just take my money and just buy it, because yeah. these guys, these guys, these guys are just awesome. Yeah. Last, I remember, I remember, like last year, I uh, due to the due to the fact that Chain has some connection down there, I was able to uh, to buy some some stock from from these guys and just like. Every product is just like stacked to the max. Yeah, they they good. They very under. I not that they're underrated. I don't like underrated. Under they they are. They are. They, they are, are underrated. 
Yeah, they, yeah. they absolutely, because I respect the shit out of them. How long have they been around? They've been around for about 10 years, right? At least. I mean, I know Steve yeah. Wood is a long, the owner of SNS has been around a long time. Um, you know, through through the good and the, the highs and lows of the industry, he's, he's stuck around. And they were quiet for a few years, um, just kind of really going like under the radar with a few things. And then the, the last two years, I mean, they've been on a steady release of some really, really solid products. And I mean, this one, everything in here is trademark or a branded ingredient. Uh, competitive edge is it as well, isn't it? Competitive badge. Com competitive competitive badge edge is, uh, is this. Yeah, CEL right here. Yeah, M-Test. So, I mean, like, if people are looking the for, like, thing. a Natty, natty yeah. Test booster, I usually say M-Test is, is a solid one to start with, and, you know, this is this one's That's not, That's yeah, the other thing that too. I've always noticed about them, even Competitive Edge. Their prices, like, are fucking in, in, and insanely competitive. And then even when it comes to, like, black, I mean, they don't do sales that often, but, like, for Black Fridays and Christmas, and they do, like, 30% off. Yeah. And their yeah. prices are not, like... Test boosters are usually 40, 50, 60. These are SNS is and competitive edge. Like they they constantly offer like I think it's like an affiliate discount. Then they do like a fat thirty. Yeah. yeah. But thirty is fine, and I mean especially if they're selling it direct, and uh, you know. But the reality is, is that they have very, very good products, and yeah. you know, obviously, you know, maybe because they don't advertise enough or don't pay enough. <laughs> But, uh, you know, I, I yeah, I, again, I hate underrated the word, but uh, they are underrated because they're probably, um, you know, when it comes to formulations and pulling, putting quality products, they easily, in my opinion, in top 10. Yeah, but that's the thing, you know, they are a type of a brand that are like, they're not like into like, uh, you know, customer. They are like just, they're just doing their thing on the yeah. radar. And they're basically just like, okay, let us like keep it silent and let the products do the talking. Yeah, yeah they I mean, used to work this... really well. It doesn't work as well as it used to these days, but you know why? Because I I remember I was like uh, big into anabolic minds forums, mm -hmm. and I remember like they were like huge down there yes, they and were. they have like an amazing community as far as like you know not only fan base but also like guys that were like doing all kinds of like threads reviews and so on of their products and we all know how how the how the forums are nowadays they're like basically like non-existent yeah. or if they are existent they're like super niche you know so more people are, are right now into like social media, Instagrams, and those kinds of shit, you know. So, no, I like the yeah, forum I think... days. Actually, you you could actually have like a nuanced discussion on it where you wouldn't just post something and somebody would say you're an idiot, and then they would go off or something like that. Like it is yeah. on social media, like Facebook or Instagram. Like you could actually have a lengthy discussion. The attention span was there, and the the desire to engage in an actual you could have have a civil disagreement with somebody. And flesh yeah. out the whole thing, whereas you know, on social media, it just turns into you know a bunch of little emojis and two-word answers and everything like that. So that's, yeah, I mean, that's the best part, man. That's the fun part. I'm glad that's, you think the, so. that's the enjoyment. I like, like when we do protein wars, like or Clash of the Cans. Whenever we announce like winners, and people say shit like, "Oh, how much do they pay you?" I've even had conversations with people. I'm like, dude, you should see my car. If they pay me, they don't pay me. <laughs> or like someone will say, oh, so-and-so cheated. And I'll be like, oh, it's nice that you think that. But we make sure no one cheats. Have a good day. Like, <laughs> this is the, but that's the fun part. There's when people get mad. And it's always about shit. I guess it's only fun when you know the other side of it. Right. Like when someone yells at me and says, oh, this brand, I don't know, did this, this, and this. And I'm like, no, they didn't. But I'm glad that you think that. That's right. nice. Yeah. But and I can't say fuck off because I gotta be nice. I'm a lawyer. You, know what? you are a lawyer. I can't, yeah. be, I can't be seen doing that. Ah, uh, Shane. It's Shane already just, going to his head. Shane just announced the functional brand of the of the year as far as like functional. I was torn on that one, man. I was torn. And I know. I know. And the bombar uh, from Russia won won the title. 
And I was like, <laughs> I was laughing because I was like, second year running. Probably Putin's gonna send him a letter, <laughs> or or I don't know, or maybe he will he will get some extra rubles for for this one. But yeah, back to back. So I'm proud. I'm proud. But, but here's the thing, like. You know, and, and, and I'm pretty sure that Shane probably got a few messages and whatnot, uh, but that's not the, the, the point. The point is, is that when it comes to functional, I don't think, you know, uh, um, uh, any of the American companies come close to a few European brands. It's no. few, it's not just one, you know, so uh, there are no arguments. Like when I think about functional, um, none of the, and I'm not very familiar, but I'm, none of the American companies come, I've never seen anyone, you know, being consistently releasing great products, beneficial products, you know, good tasting product in United States. Europe is, you know, whooping easily United States ass, easily. I, I, I will admit, nutrition. I felt Quest Nutrition did a very good job this year. Like I know they're under like a new ownership and everything, but over like the past couple of years, but they did a very good job this year with um, consistency and releasing some different stuff. Mm. Uh, maybe, maybe, but the thing is, is that still Europe, I mean, I can see even your posts uh, all the time when it comes to functional food. It's Europe, 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 nonstop Europe. And, you know, and well, the, I the, the, the best I can do is is constantly throw Europe in your face and hopefully you'll be it'll finally stick and you'll be like, damn, that shit looks good. I'm going to go to beast mode or protein pick and mix and ship them over that's that that's that's really the best i can do because eventually it'll get seep in and people will realize all right like basically yeah, every, yeah. every every month we are getting like something stupid like wild here in europe yeah. and you know not only like from like sausages to like all different kinds of bars waffles wafers you know it, it's just it's just insane it's it's listen it's when, I, when i was uh you, you know when i was in um uh, when i went to fibo that was four years ago i believe and i went to s and pro in russia um you know a few times actually i think i went three times and if you go to the olympia and you go to the arnold classic typically it's uh you try pre-workouts you try aminos and you try protein and you try protein bars that's pretty much dominant on this circuit right here that's pretty dominant but when you go to europe and you know people in america don't understand that when you go to europe and you try day protein bars and when you try day functional foods that they have at expo and they have a lot from different sauces to different uh spreads to different crackers and shit like that i mean it's like everywhere and one is more tasty than the other one they just uh, like very, very innovative. They very, very good. And when I was at SN Pro last time, Bombard was fucking half of the expo was Bombard. They had so many flavors and so many different bars. And like I said, we all know that most bars quality, they shit, but it's not about that. It's about the fact that they functional protein based, whatever. But Bombard was, I mean, they had so many flavors back then that I was absolutely shocked. I think my guess, there were like 50. It, it was insane. It was insane. And the line that was there, they were dominating. There's nobody, no American brand when it comes to protein bars could come close to them. Yeah, some of them tasted better. Some of them tasted worse. But the flavors, I mean, they had any, any flavor you can imagine. And they just kept expanding, expanding. I went to three consecutive S, S and Pro. And with each and every one, Bomb bar was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah, you know what? But what I just wanted to like end this uh, conversation as far as like you know the the function of food. You know, when, when it comes to like bomb bar and the owner, he appreciates and he listens to uh, customers' feedback. Because I remember like you know two years ago when we first start our communication we were like talk back and forth and so on he sent me a first care package with samples that i could provide to my team and we were testing all the products and i agree with you like 80 percent of the flavors were not good we're like yeah. what the what the hell is that uh, or the consistency were just sucked and i told him straight away you know dude it's not good 
it's appealing as far as like you know that you have for example 20 flavors of of, of your protein bar but you know like maybe just like five of them are good uh, the other one tastes like shit and he went he, he went back you know and take some some steps back you know just to make some steps forward and now he improved his formulas he released more new stuff and it just shows you know that you know with hard work you can you, you can get it done so yeah man and this year was was incredible for them not only from like releasing flavors but he released like all different kinds of new stuff including like you know energy drinks ice cream and and so on so yeah man, props to them well, even when when it comes to say cream of rice right like a lot of bodybuilders and a lot of athletes yeah. and a lot of people eat cream of rice I was buying obviously, you know, the brand that you know that is in the United States, Uncle Dan's cream of rice. Amazing. Really, really, really good. But when Pride Foods came up with cream of rice, everybody and their mother jumped on it. Everybody. And uh, it's been a couple of years now, it's been three or four years that they came out with different flavors and you know they came up with the product. I've tried almost every flavor, not not every, but you know, a lot of them. And to be honest with you. I did like them. They 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 pretty good, but I noticed that um, I'm a little bit bloated from them. Like I, I don't know what's in them, but I I felt like a little bit discomfort. And pretty much with each and every flavor, not bad, but it definitely wasn't. I, it didn't feel the same as I would feel, say, with uh, regular cream of rice that you buy the clean one, and I would add like a scoop of protein to it or something like that, and I feel amazing. With this one, the flavor was there, but for me, again, I'm I'm only speaking for myself. For me, it was a little bit too much in terms of how I felt, and I stopped using it. But uh, right now on the market, it's been three or four years. Nobody really came up with that, uh, uh, with that, um, you know, uh, concept. Maybe there is a company, or maybe two, but I haven't heard about anyone, or anyone at least substantial that can compete with them. But then every time I look on Stack, there is fucking cream of rice that comes out of Europe, specifically UK not non fucking stop it's just one after another one amazing uh labels amazing uh flavors i mean at least they look amazing because i haven't tried any of them uh but i would imagine that at least some of them taste very good mm -hmm. pete uh pasmus or presumus how do you say your last name pete anyway sent sent us a text of where we can find crazy uncle eddie from muscle players on this uh nonsense dry scoop stuff so it's about a third of the way into the clip. Let's see if, uh, let me know if y'all can hear the audio, guys. Contains potentially dangerous chemical stimulants. Wanted to let everybody know what the hell's going on with boom, dark energy, all right? In video, <laughs> this employee at a Nutrition Zone store in New Jersey was selling dark energy, even though it was recently banned by the FDA because it contained an illegal stimulant, often compared to methamphetamine. If you like dark energy, you better Get it now, because I'm telling you, this video goes up now. I bet you the whole box is going to be sold up by midnight tonight. Over the summer, we went undercover to see if it was still on the shelves. That's meant for special occasions, meaning, like, don't use it every day. The employee cautioned us about dark energy, pointing out the warning label. Research product not for human consumption. <laughs> yeah, so they did that on purpose to get away with legality issues, but the government didn't seem to like that. But he was still happy to sell it. And he even pushed another product containing the same dangerous stimulant. It's named Crack. This is like. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> Shit. Are you aware that it's a banned substance? I spoke to Eddie Aletta outside Nutrition Zone. Aren't you worried about the safety of your customers, Eddie? Absolutely. Yeah, I am. But everybody, it even says it on there. It's not meant for human consumption. So I warned them. But you know that it's dangerous. What do you want me to do? I don't make the decisions for people. They do. If something does say something in the jar, not for human consumption, don't take it. Very simple. That's all. And it does say that. Exactly. So don't take it. <laughs> That's all you got to do. Don't sell it. How no. about that? <laughs> if something says not for human consumption, you should run the other direction. If there's no research on the ingredients in that product, you should run. Oh, this is bad. I mean, she's not wrong. I mean, if this is not for human consumption, probably don't sell it. Well, the the two women in the video aren't doing much favor. Like you can see, they're trying to bait them into. You know doing what? I mean, yeah, the, that was why they were there. Shouldn't you? 
clearly they're for the nanny state approach of saying, yeah. hey, we're going to tell you what you can and cannot put in your body. That's not the way it works, bitch. It's, we're going to put something out there. If you want to try it, you do your own homework. You're responsible. You play a stupid game, you're going to win a stupid prize. And so you take too much caffeine. You know, am I going to regulate how much caffeine or coffee you can drink in a day, you dumb idiot? No. She, she, she did point out, though, that one of them had an ingredient that was banned by the FDA. And this is one of those. This, yeah. Who's that guy that, like, he does those studies or whatever, those, those little... Uh, Peter Cohen from Harvard? Yeah. He, like, comes out every now and then and he'll say, like, oh, this product has this. This product has this. Yeah. And he just states the obvious and how so all these things are, like, against the rules and regulations. And I always find it so interesting that Brian he's just saying... He's not, I mean, he's just saying, like, hey, by the way, this isn't allowed and these guys are doing it. And, like, some yeah. of these products have been around for a while. This is kind of like what she's done. She's like... She's just like, you know, like, you know, this shouldn't be available for sale, but you can go grab it. I just thought it was interesting how, like, yeah. how in your face he was. So, so the thing is, is that, um, I, I mean, I love Uncle Eddie. Eddie's a good friend of mine and uh, he's an amazing guy, good friend. But, um, you know, it, it comes down to like, we, we, we're talking constantly about the, the industry and the, the bad, you know, and shady part of the industry, which industry, every industry has. But the thing is, is that um, we are, and I'm, I'm saying we, uh, the industry endorses these products. It does endorse, whether we like it or not, they profiting and they endorsing it. And here is the main problem. So you saying it's not for human consumption, right? So it says right on the label, not for human consumption. It was manufactured in the same way as Blackstone did manufacture illegally their products, saying that they manufactured in a, you know, in a legit company while they were manufacturing, I believe, somewhere in Vegas, undercovers bullshit. But we are talking about the product was manufactured illegally. There was absolutely no FDA approved facility. There was no GMP. There was no regulation. There is nothing. They bringing the the powders from China that are not tested uh, from shady manufacturing, and they cooking it in a basement somewhere at home. Now they doing it obviously to sell to humans, right? I mean they 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 labeling it as a pre workout, <laughs> but on the label they putting not for human consumption. So it is it is sold. In a supplement store, in a supplement store where people are buying Cellucor, Apollon, um, and different brands that are actually manufacturing legit pre-workouts and whatnot. But now on the same shelf, you have a product in a supplement store where supplements are supposed to be sold to improve athletic performance, to make you healthier, to make you stronger, to make you better. So you're selling it not for human consumption, yet you're selling it among products for human consumption. So that's the same way as if I own yeah. a blueberry and I'm gonna bring dog meat and I'm gonna put it on a shelf and I'm gonna say, that's not for human consumption, but it's right next to lamb and pork and beef and chicken. You know, you can buy it, you can cook it. It's not so, that makes me basically not liable. You know, I have nothing to do with it. I just fucking went and I fucking killed a dog and decided to sell dogs and cats and whatnot and rats. And in the in the butcher store, that's what I'm. That's, but uh, it, if you go to a grocery store, they sell bleach there and Lysol. No, I mean, it's, you know, no, it's one of those. Drink that though. I mean, it's, it's one of those. You can't it's say one that. of those. Don't confuse that. Now you're talking about I, supermarkets. And bleach, yeah, bleach, I, bleach is I agree with Robic on this product. one. This is something that is specialty store. Specialty store selling supplements. Supplements they don't sell bleach and whatnot. And and, and if you have bleach, you have a section. That is yeah. from meat and diet coke and whatnot and from food. It's completely right. different. You know, if you're a moron, you oh, can uh, buy bleach and drink it. That's fine by, by me. Well, yeah, but the thing but... is, is like, you have uh, a product that says not for human consumption, but was manufactured for yeah, human, for human consumption. consumption. Yeah, yeah and I... in between, in one hand, you're going to have Cellucor. On the other hand, you're going to have BSN. And in between, you're going to have this one. And it's pushed for you, it's pushed to you, to sell to you as a pre-workout. And that's just a little disclaimer. And guess what? That dark energy, they got busted. They got busted. And I, I mean, they're, yeah. they, they're done. So the thing is, is that it's a very, very fine line. And you know what's more upsetting? 
is when you have pre-workout of the year, like for example, our friend from South Africa, John, is doing right now a pre-workout of the year. I didn't comment, I didn't oh, say it worked because it's exactly what Review Brothers did. All of a sudden, Assassin is nominated. I believe Hooligan is nominated. Great, good for me. But I'm nominated right to fucking crack. Right next to it, will you see, um, you know, best burger of the month next to Bleach? You're not going to see that. A burger of the month is going to be McDonald's versus oh. Burger King versus God knows what. So the thing is, is they're not exactly wrong because, the, you know, we're selling junk. We are selling junk in a supplement store. You can buy an absolute junk of questionable quality of God knows what's in it. You know, you as a supplement engineer, will you recommend certain brands to a consumer? You know, if somebody's going to ask you, Robert, can you recommend a pre-workout? You're most likely going to ask, what are your goals? What are your needs? You right. know, that, that, that's what you're going to do. And a person's going to say, well, you know what? I want to be fucking in a zone. I want something very aggressive. I want something very strong, you know, with stems, with everything else. You most likely will refer them to Assassin. You will not refer them to Crack or Dark yeah. Energy. You will never do that, you know? And they might be actually stronger than Assassin. It's a, it's a high possibility. It's a very high possibility Correct. that they're actually stronger than Assassin. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to, uh, you know, say that they're not. They're very, very possibly stronger. The problem is, is that what's in them? And on, on most of them, it says not for human consumption, but they are sold right next to Assassin. Yeah, and that's... It, you know, I mean, I mean, I'm not big on rules and regulations, and sometimes I think it's highly exaggerated. And I think sometimes the government oversteps, and sometimes I think it, it's pushed a little bit too far. But you know what? If you have a son or a daughter, and they're competing or doing something, and you are knowledgeable, or at least know something about supplements, will you really recommend those products for your son or your daughter? You know what? Take crack because you're going to be fucking flying. That's going to be. And you know what? They might be flying. And you know what? Even taking a certain legal uh, supplement that is, uh, you know, take, for example, 20 scoops or 10 scoops of Cellucor. I mean, you might fucking drop that. It's very, very possible. So we cannot control people's stupidity. But if the product contains legit ingredients, if the product is manufactured right, then you know what you have no issues and no fear to sell it you know customers are some customers are fucking dumb because they're not asking questions and they're not knowledgeable for example i got a question yesterday i got a, a question uh your product liver uh, liver lover is it any good <laughs> i'm like uh you know i don't think we manufacture products that are not good at least i don't think so the follow-up question was, what is it for? I'm like, with the name Liver Lover, what do you think it's for? Maybe he read it Liver Lover. Yeah, but, and, mm. and, and then I said to him, but the information <laughs> is right. It, the information is on stack. The information is on Apollo Nutrition. Information is like all over. It's available. So you get that type, type, type of customer that just simply does not care to look, uh, you know, it, it, it was a dumb question. Uh, but then yeah. you have a good question. For example, I had another question a couple of days ago, which I thought was legit. Uh, a lady actually contacted me and she said, your product bloody hell. I'm very interested in it. She says, uh, it says that it's non-stem. You know, it's advertised as non-stem. I was like, correct, it's non-stem. She goes, but the ingredient in it, self flow, it's green tea. She says green tea can contain caffeine, you know, so I had to explain to her why it's non-stem. But the question is, uh, the question was valid. It was a legit no. question for somebody who actually wanted to know, right. and she was not wrong. She actually asked a legit question that I took time to explain to her. She thanked me. I thanked her for a question, and we good. So, you know, I mean, when we push a product, we own a supplement store, and we're selling a product that, that says it's not for human consumption in a supplement store where everything is basically for human consumption. I mean, we're clearly misleading somebody to make a buck. And it's just, it's a fact. You, we, we can't deny it. If we want to be transparent, if we want to be honest, yeah. I mean, that's exactly what we're doing. And, you know, if, you, if you're making 
something legit and you're very very passionate about your product um you know i mean you, you're not going to be very happy when your product is compared to something that does not belong in that category because that just uh, i think it's a little bit disrespectful i i, I yeah i have to agree on robert i think yeah. The thing I, I get what Robert's saying, like it is your like if you it is your choice and I guess if 100%. You can, but like in from from I think like Walmart wouldn't put that on their shelves because no. they know that someone their shoppers and I think ninety percent, ninety five percent of customers don't give a shit. They just be like, Okay, I need some energy. This one looks good, I'll take it. I think ninety, ninety five percent, maybe even more, that's what people that's how people shop. Maybe it, we're, we're in the, the smallest of the smallest of the smallest minority that actually read and look into all this stuff. And Walmart wouldn't sell it because they know that someone would very likely come around, pick it up, have a bad reaction, and they're like, oh, by the way, it says not for human consumption. But that's not going to fly. But I think, yeah. like Robert said, everything in that store is for human consumption. And they've presented it with a flavored powder and branding for human consumption. If it was in a store where everything wasn't for human consumption and it was like a research chemical store, then I would understand Robert's point because it's okay, I'm going here to find things that if I want, I can use, but I understand that I can't blame anybody of the, but this is a place where everything is consumed. You, you, it's, it's not even like, like yeah. a question you go in there cause you believe everything is, you can consume it. That's what a supplement store is. I guess it would be like if you went to Starbucks and, you know, they put out 10 muffins and they're all made of cement. You wouldn't think that you couldn't eat them. You would think they're muffins so you could eat them. But they'd be like, oh, this is actually edible. Sorry. But you would assume it and you wouldn't even think about asking until you bought it because you're at a fucking store. Yeah. But I think that research chemical thing is like, I feel like you would need to have like a separate store or like even like a separate section. So like yeah, yeah, like the, only like the, the porn section in the in the blockbuster, you well, know, where they had the back of the store. Like, and chain. Yeah. Yeah. Lucas yeah. knows. Yes. You, you, you gave a perfect <laughs> example. So I actually just remembered something. Uh, back when I lived in Soviet Union, you know, uh, obviously, you know, Russians are very famous for drinking alcohol, for drinking vodka, right? Uh, so... There was obviously, you know, shortages in the store. Sometimes you couldn't find vodka and, you know, alcohol. I mean, it was a typical state of uh, USSR where there were certain things were missing from the store. Now, take a guess. What were alcoholics drinking? As a substitute. Rubbing for alcohol? What's that? Rubbing alcohol? Nope. No. I mean, Hand sanitizer? Perfume. My next guess would have been vanilla extract because that uses an alcohol base. Well, perfume is using an alcohol base. So they were drinking that. You can only imagine what was happening to them. It was a specific cologne. was it was actually um, a, a, a Russian brand. I think it was called Red Moscow or Red, Red Square or something like that. It was cheap, disgusting shit. Uh, it smelled like shit. I mean, obviously, I didn't drink it. I was 13 when I left. But the thing is, is that they were drinking it. There was fucking poisoning all over the place. It did contain alcohol. It did, yeah. I mean, obviously not for human consumption. They were drinking. It was actually a widespread thing. Very well-known thing. They were drinking perfume. Yeah. I mean, I guess I, I liken that thing to something like the Tide Pod Challenge that went around a couple of years ago. <laughs> like, if you're going to do something stupid and you die from it, I have no sympathy for you. I don't think that, like, we should start regulating the Tide Pod industry. Like, you can't use pods or I'm like... If you are a moron and you do something that's completely ass fucking retarded, you deserve to die from it. Like if, if, if I go and I drink a fifth of bourbon every day and I die from liver failure, that's on me. We don't need to de like pull down the, the liquor stores or pull down the, the bourbon industry or anything like that. I made a dumbass choice. And that, I guess that's kind of the way I feel like that. No, yeah, no, just, and you're right. And I'm not, I'm not disputing or arguing that. I'm all about yeah. freedom of choice and stuff like that. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. But we all know about the term forbidden fruit, right? We all know that. So the thing yeah. is, is that if I own a supplement store and you're a dumbass average guy who doesn't know anything, you uh -huh. walk into my supplement store, which sells supplements. Why did you fucking walk into the, my store? Because you want to get a pre-workout. 
you didn't walk into my stores to buy to my store to buy illegal underground questionable drug you walked into my store a supplement store to buy a pre-workout now you're walking into my store and you're saying like give me something strong i want something fucking super super strong and i'm pointing you on to okay here's this product and here's this product and there's this product yeah. by the way here's this fucking product that is oh my god it kicks ass i mean this shit will light you up yeah. uh, you know it even says not for human consumption that's how strong it is I mean, I'm basically selling it to you. I'm selling it to you as a pre-workout, it's, you know, and you won't fucking buy it because you're stupid. I wouldn't be you if I would. If yeah, I Lucas, would. Lucas, Lucas is like, <laughs> tell me more. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't but be you, everybody but everybody I got a sweet fat deal. Like <laughs> yeah, when, 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 when you go on something and again, I mean, they can fucking get upset with me all they want. I don't know anything else but telling the truth. You know, if you go on something like and you check Eddie, DJ, Review Brothers, check the comments on the YouTube. If there is a com if it comes an argument about pre workout, I mean that's the following. Right. I mean, I'm not saying everybody because that would be disrespectful. But a lot of the of the times you will see what is a good pre workout. Oh, Excelsior that kicks ass. Or this product, Dark Energy, it kicks ass. Oh, is, is Excelsior better than fucking a Dark Energy? Both of them are not fucking pre-workouts. They are shady sure. products made by shady people to make a buck. And, I mean, are you saying that those are athletes? It's the same thing as bodybuilders. You know, you look around, uh, uh, you know, every gym rat, the illegal substances that are manufactured in somebody's basement do you really think that elite bodybuilders are using shit that is like of questionable quality when they have to compete on the Olympia level and stuff like that? No, they're using legit, most of it is legit pharmaceutical, great, more expensive, high quality stuff, you know? And, you know, when, when, when a bodybuilder, elite bodybuilder, gives an interview and he's actually honest and transparent and they ask him, well, how much uh, testosterone are you using? And he goes, well, I use about 500 milligrams per week. You say, oh, you're fucking lying. He's a fucking liar. There is no way on 500 milligrams you can look like that. You know, my boy is using 1,500 or 2,000 milligrams of test. He doesn't look nearly as good as you. Uh, he doesn't have the genetics. He doesn't use good shit. He uses fucking underground crap. Yeah. God knows what's in it. Mm -hmm. There was recently I talked to somebody who knows, a, you know, um, underground steroid manufacturer and he admitted to him he actually admitted to him he goes when we sell anabar anabar is a very strong uh, hardening drug uh helps with contest preparation it's it's pretty amazing and very low side effects but the cost of it the cost to manufacture it the real cost is extremely expensive but if you take something like d-ball d-ball is very very cheap I mean, it will make you retain water and give you that puffy look, but it's very, very cheap. He admitted that either they're using underdosed Anavar, they're actually underdosing it, or they're using as a substitute something like Devo, something of a cheaper quality. Yeah. There is no regulation. Nobody can catch them. It's not possible. If you think that uh, Jay Cutler is going to buy it, or you know, or Phil Heath would have bought that, they're not. That's the reason why they most likely actually not lying when they say the dosages that they're using because they're using high quality stuff. Right. And it comes exactly the same to supplements. You know, something can give you insane energy and then you go test it and God knows what's in it. And we've seen it time and time again. You know, and that's just, I mean, there, yeah. unfortunately, it's wrong. It's, it's just wrong. You know, there are no, you know, somebody accused me once of, oh, he's being jealous or he's being bitter. Jealous of what? Jealous of somebody manufacturing illegal substances? W what am I jealous of? What am I bitter of? I'm bitter about the fact that it, it that's exactly what gives the supplement industry a bad name. You know, yeah, we cannot fix stupid. So somebody can go and buy a very mild pre-workout, fucking do five scoops of it and end up with issues. But that comes with everything, you know. I mean, you can take aspirin and overdose on that and have consequences as well. Yeah. Or Advil, something that is sold over the counter. But we, we willingly, you know, kind of closing our eyes on the fact that people are cheating, selling dangerous substances, not even dangerous, unknown substances, 
and saying, oh, look, it's not for human consumption. You're going to be pretty cool if you use it. You know, it's a Russian roulette. Go, go and fucking use it. Is that, is that like a, is that like a, is that like an actual rule? Or is it like, like that, like you can sell DMAA or whatever it is. And you can say not for human consumption. It's like, oh no, that's okay. I mean, you can sell it now. All it's those peptide like, companies get away with that stuff. All those, yeah, all those. The no, but like, do they get away with it or like? To an extent, like, there's a difference so because, like, do. if. But I mean, to an extent, they, they do because, like, let let's face it. You know, FDA right now and DEA, they have their hands full with so many things right yeah, now. Like, yeah, like they're not going to go to each and every store. However, you know, specifically dark energy. Why did they get busted? Because they were so fucking vocal about it. They not yeah. like. Uh, you know, that company that manufactures uh, crack, I mean, they're out of Poland, they're out of Europe. So nobody's going to go after them, at least not here. But Dark Energy, Poland, I, I, as a pollen nutrition, not a pollen jam, as a pollen nutrition, I got an email from them asking me to sell Dark Energy at the gym. You know, so they were selling, they were sending emails, messages. They're from Austria. Say Austria. We don't Austria. want to tell them where they are. You know, so they, they, they were saying, and that's how they we don't have them. roads. So don't say, don't say Poland. Speaking of which, they can travel. What's the update on the Polish road situation, Lucas? I'm oh, walking. A thing. I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm still walking. I don't have a car, so you can imagine what's, what's the update. <laughs> Five dollar donation from Brooke. Thank you, Brooke. Almost forgot. Donation towards the Pantheon of Knowledge. Happy pre Thanksgiving. Yes. Oh, Thank yeah. you. Thanksgiving next week. Yes. This coming Thursday, yeah. So I will be in New Orleans next Saturday at my parents' house, uh, during the podcast. So we'll be doing the uh I, I still intend to do like Robbie, you're are you going out of town for Thanksgiving or anything? I know Lucas and Shane couldn't give a shit otherwise. Um, hey, 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 hey. I celebrate <laughs> the American occasions, just as much as anyone else. I forget mine, and I celebrate yours, oh, including okay. the Cinco de Mayo and and uh, <laughs> Cinco de Mayo. Not Mayo. We're not celebrating the fifth of mayonnaise here. No one, no one, no one says it around here. So how am I to know if I'm right or wrong? Fourth uh, of July. Are you saying New Day. Zealand discriminates against Mexican chain? Did I just understand you correctly? You said I have never met a single Mexican in this country in the entire time I've lived here, so it's no surprise that no one here <laughs> has ever said the word, and I'm not surrounded by anyone who says Cinco de Mayo. So, so did I understand you correctly? New Zealand prohibits Mexicans from entering the country. Is that what you're saying here? They could come if they want. I'm pretty sure anyone can come. I just don't think. Uh, what's the other ones? Labor Day, you have a Labor Day? Yes. We have a Labor Day, but it's a different time. Okay. Uh, your Father's Day is different. It is. Is Halloween still the same for y'all? Yeah. Thank, we also have fire, Guy Fawkes. Black oh, Friday. Cool. Yeah. yeah, Black Friday. We, New Zealand, like, used to do Black Friday, but, like, the week early. And <laughs> everyone would say to me, like, oh, my God, Black Friday's next week. Are you going to buy some stuff from America? And I'm like, for starters... New Zealand's a fucking years behind. And second, they're doing it wrong. It's next week. The fuck are you doing? It's after I think because I think they do it so that they're not trumped by America. Like right. a lot of companies here do it on a week early so that they can be like, take we'll take your money before the American sales <laughs> Yeah, early Black Black Friday. Steal all your money. Cause they know theirs are better. So they always do them early. Yeah. I, I celebrate Thanksgiving. Okay. Well good. I don't need a turkey or anything, I just you just celebrate I the just, day. I don't. Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, I'm still going to buy a turkey for you. Oh, yeah. There you go. We appreciate it, Lucas. But yeah, but yeah. If y'all are good with the podcast still same time next week, then we'll, uh, we will roll forward. I'm planning same to do it anyway. Time, same place. Yeah. Thanksgiving. It's uh, Black Friday. Cyber Monday. There you go. I am interested to see the deals on Black Friday. I reckon my proteins is going to be... They said it's the greatest of all time. So, you know. And I don't know, Rickon, great, Rickon ones probably, will be huge probably, as well. They're probably going to give people money to buy their shit. Probably. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if anybody, I know you said like they still make money. I don't know. Some of these people that I feel like they push the boundary. They're like, fuck it. We'll just lose money. Uh, actually, I, would I wanted super... to ask you, speaking of European brand, uh, a friend of mine and I were discussing a brand, Yamamoto Nutrition. 
Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. They not, uh, you know, I mean, they represented us <laughs> American athletes and, uh, you know, uh, Flex Lewis and whatnot. They don't have any presence really substantially in the United States, but I heard they actually you can buy the products online and they do ship worldwide. I don't know if it's true or not, but that's what I heard. And I heard that they're very, very big operation. I'll message you something. Uh oh. Lucas probably already knows this. Uh oh. Okay, I'm Lucas does know this. <laughs> I'm not okay. going to say anything. No, I'm Wait. not going to say it. Okay, <laughs> that's it. got it. But go for it. I'm not going to say it. I'm not. I'm not that stupid. No, 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 no. So, so I just know. I just know. I know a few other Italian brands. Mm. But I know <laughs> that they used to have a store in the U.S. They used to have like a. They launched two, three years ago in the U.S. There was. They own store. They had. They had an online U.S. store, and they launched at the Olympia. But it was like a small selection of their products. But then I don't. I don't know if it's still around. But you can buy straight from their Italian one, which is. Fucking ginormous. Yeah, because as far as like the range of problems they got, oh, it's like yeah. everything. It, it's, it's ridiculous. ridiculous. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. Uh, last call for any comments and questions from the peanut gallery that's tuning in right now. Uh, <laughs> and while we, we give you a few minutes to uh, get your comments, and I'll take this time to remind you to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, subscribe to the Stack Podcast, available on all prominent podcast perusing platforms and leave Shane at least a four and a half star review, preferably somewhere at between least. three and four. Don't let Pretty him get cool. a five because then he kind of takes us over and we can't have him superseding the final scoop in the, uh, the podcast ranking algorithm. And when you address him, please make sure that you call him Lord chain. Yes. Sorry. I, I forgot that. Subscribe to Lord Shane's <laughs> podcast. Yes. Hell thank yeah. you. Thank you. And don't forget to use the five discounts on the bottle nutrition side. Yes, using code Final Scoop for a fat fifteen percent discount. Thank yes, you, later. Paul, we will be on next Saturday, same bat time, same bat channel. Uh, yeah. And in closing, favorite since Shane, you celebrate Lord Shane, you celebrate uh, Thanksgiving. Robbie, you do too. Lucas, you can feel free to chime in with whatever uh, favorite Thanksgiving side dish. Oof. Okay, I mean I could be wrong here. Mm-hmm. But I just eat the one big dish. <laughs> I mean, I don't. Know you, I don't. I don't know you what the tradition. Turkey? You don't have like look. I, pr- mashed potatoes I pronounced, or sweet potatoes I pronounced or Cinco de Mayo wrong. Okay, so <laughs> I obviously have no clue on any of this. So look, when I eat my dinner, I get a big plate. I right. don't have little plates, and if I have the big <laughs> table where you pick things from, which I b- believe is what you're talking about. Yeah, I just mean like what is of the uh, we're, we're taking the turkey off the table. So of the other little accoutrements that are on your plate, uh, what is your favorite? I don't know if I'd call that a side dish, but I understand what you're saying now. Just yeah. a quick question. You you guys, guys, to say vegetables guys, or no, 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 no. I fully expect Thanksgiving is not the time for vegetables. I, I'm fully. My expect. spread is very different from American ones. I think. Then what's your spread? Do you, do you still prepare uh, a big bird, or you go with the other meats? Well, Robert does. Last year, we stayed here in Texas for Thanksgiving, and I cooked two little mini Cornish hens for me and Sandy, so we each got a, a little mini bird. Yeah. yeah so funny they, enough, that's... A, I'm, I'm hearing, I'm hearing you now that like more and more Americans are like not going for the you know, big bird and like yeah. we're not cooking turkey, and they're like more into like other meat. Such as They'll like, do a ham or a prime rib or something, because usually like a lot of people, some part of it is... Like the divorce rate in America is huge. It's, it's over fifty percent, I think, somewhere around there. So people are going to like two or three Thanksgivings in a single day. <laughs> so they're going to probably have turkey at one of them, and then the second meal they're going to have ham or prime rib or something like that. Americans, so, this they are so bad. <laughs> Chickens are fucking used. The pork. Uh, I mean, anything pretty much. But I did mm. notice in the le- in, re- in recent years there is definitely kind of like less turkey. I'm not saying the turkey is eliminated, but I would say. I wouldn't be surprised if a good a good percentage are not actually using turkey. And I think I, I, I don't mind that because I think it's a little bit more than just about, you know, the bird itself. Yeah. But uh, Robert, you know what? Funny enough, you asked the question about the side dish. I mean, I lived here since 97 and, you know, obviously, you know, I like American holidays and I mm-hmm. celebrate them and whatnot. There is one thing associated with Thanksgiving 
because you said side dishes and stuff like that, yeah. that I cannot do. I mean, for some reason, just not my thing. What's it's that? very, very common with turkey and Thanksgiving. Stuffing? Stuffing I like. Gravy? Cranberry sauce. Oh, oh well, if that depends. Like the dull stuff that comes in a can, fuck, get get that out of here. I make I make the stuff from scratch. That if, have you had like real cranberry sauce or just no. like the stuff no. in the can? No, I mean I, I did have like from a can. I'll admit it was a can. I, I yeah, yeah, the can stuff's gross. Like that or like green bean casserole. I can't stand that stuff either. So you make your own cranberry sauce. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I take a pot and I'll dump in some of the fresh cranberries in there and then I'll put some orange zest and some other kind of stuff and let it all cook down and then you best cook it either the night before or like the morning of and so then you stick it in the fridge and you get it, let it solidify and congeal and everything, make it all nice and happy and then, yeah, you can also sprinkle some pecans on top. Really good. So I'll be making that Thursday at my in-law's house. Um, we're driving into New Orleans Wednesday, staying with Sandy's parents when... <laughs> Nine hours? Oof. Yeah. So we're, we're deciding. So Wednesday and Thursday will be at Sandy's house. Friday and Saturday will be at my parents' house, and they're driving back next Sunday. Oh, okay. So, yeah. I think either uh, – have you all ever heard of a turducken? What's that? Take a turkey, fill, put a duck inside of it, and then you put a chicken inside of the duck, and you cook all three of them bitches together. It's a turducken. So like an orgy. That, yeah, I wanted to say. <laughs> yeah, it's like a like a bird orgy. Yeah, it's a it's a chicken stuffed hmm. inside of a duck stuffed inside of a turkey. It's a double you know, Between the between the divorce rates and noodles, you Americans are, <laughs> are fascinating people. I tell you that. I've never had one. I've just seen people attempt to cook it. I don't know if it's a New Orleans creation, but I remember seeing like the local chefs around in and around New Orleans cook it a lot. I mean, I could be wrong, but I prefer just just my meat on my plate. Yeah. Not my meat inside, more meat and more meat. It's it's just my meat. And I think our traditional New Zealand spread is probably not quite what you're explaining. Yeah. I didn't know it was like a set thing. Like I see in the movies how they prepare the turkey and they have the dishes. Yeah. I thought that was just like... Like a classic family thing. Yeah. This is just fucking stupid. The turducken. Oh, <laughs> Where history? See, I knew it. <laughs> chef Paul Prudhomme. I actually ate at his restaurant. I got to meet him once. Claims to have created it. Turkey stuffed with a duck, stuffed with a chicken. Now this dude, this dude was like four hundred pounds, but he made some damn good food. God damn. Yeah. Kind of like the godfather of New Orleans cuisine. There he's, there's oh, big damn. <clears throat> I'm telling you, man, he was he's a permabulk. And then he had gastric well, bypass. And uh I was gonna say he looks he looks significantly smaller. Good on him in yeah. one of them. Yeah. But yeah, man. <clears throat> he's a he's a big boy. He's a Well, he lived for to seventy five. That's pretty good. Yeah, putting everything in but we made a, a thing called Big Chicken Mamu one time. And I think it's actually in this recipe book because we have this one. The recipe calls for four sticks of butter, in just and that oh. serves four people. It's a pasta dish with a, the, a butter sauce and, and some chicken in it and everything. Now you understand why you are so fat. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember that uh, that um, that restaurant I was talking about in Vegas? The uh, the one where they oh, fuck I can't remember the name. We had the scale outside, and if you have a three hundred fifty pounds, you eat for free. Is that the heart attack in, grill? Yeah, yeah, heart attack grill. Yeah. My my uh, Nikki got a milkshake there one year, and she was like, "Ah, oh, you know, I don't feel like eating a lot of meat, so I had a milkshake." And the milkshake came with a stick of butter on top, like, wow. and, and she she was just like, "Oh, they put like cheese on it," and then she grabbed it and she's like, "Holy fuck, this is butter!" <laughs> How did like, it taste? Butter. She took the butter out. No, she I mean the, the shake. Did it affect the shake? Oh, I mean, Jesus Christ! Of course, it was, I mean, it's a heart attack grill. All health concerns go out the window. It's uh, it was delicious. Yeah, there you go. One pound of unsalted butter, and then an extra additional four tablespoons <laughs> of unsalted butter. Isn't there not a measurement where you could say like a pound and a half or something? Why is it? I don't understand why it put so much butter into it. Because it makes everything taste better. 
Yeah, man, but it's like, you know... Look, Lucas, Lucas, they, they eat noodles instead of pasta. They get divorced every week. Okay, we, we don't... I don't pretend to understand. Oh, yeah, man. It's America, man. What's going on here? Yeah. One pound plus four tablespoons butter. My God. They yeah. put birds inside other birds and outside other bird, and then they eat it. I mean, come I'll on. Stick, I'll stick to my uh, no-road country instead of, like, you know, this yeah. kind of shit. I mean, I see, I see some weird shit, but I don't know. This is so. A lot of holidays are coming up. Uh, when are we gonna do the eating thing? Uh, a few people actually asked. Uh, yeah, I'm good. Good. I'm good. Whenever, whenever y'all say, I'm good. Just not next Saturday. No, no, not next Saturday. I mean, we have to schedule it. We have to decide what are we doing. Are we competing or are we just fucking eating? Like, well, wait, hold maybe on. Some, maybe something before Christmas. It can't be the day after. It can't be the week after next Saturday, because I I might not be able to do this. It's you lose your birthday. lordship if that happens. You skip an episode, you are disavowed as a lord on the final scoop. Guess what? I don't give a shit because <laughs> I have a certificate that says Lord Jane, and I'm pretty sure I'm still holding it. So <laughs> go fuck yourself. <laughs> give, me, give me Nikki's number. I'm gonna text her and tell her to throw it in the shredder. <laughs> it's a digital copy. I can print out as many oh. as I fucking want. Okay, well never mind. <laughs> I paid twenty five freedom dollars. Do you really think they weren't going to give me a digital copy? <laughs> Jesus! You know when people arrive at the airport and they have uh, and a chauffeur is uh, yeah for them with a fucking tag. When Shane comes to New Jersey, I'm going to be at the airport, Lord Shane. <laughs> That's why I bought it. This is the <laughs> sole reason. <laughs> Nikki said she's like, "You're going to change your passport," and I was like, "Do you think I can?" I wasn't sure if you're allowed to. I don't think I can. I don't think you can put Lord on your passport, but. I'll tell you what, when I and when I updated it, if I can, sure, sure, yeah. sure am. Of course. Can I, I buy? Can, is this is this only for British citizens to apply, or can I? No, can it's I, for can anyone. I become a lord. You can go get one too. Oh, fuck. All right, I might become a lord then. Yeah. Tell you what, we'll all be lords next week. There we go. <laughs> Send me the link, Shane. When you after we get off this podcast. It's the best thing in the world. Yeah. I asked Nikki if she wanted to be a lady. She said, "I'm fucking stupid." <laughs> so, right, yeah. Fair enough. Her loss. It, it, technically, even if you're stupid, you're still a stupid lord. Yeah, I'd rather be lord stupid than just stupid. Yeah. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Makes everything sound better. All right, my friends. I think we're gonna call this one uh, done and send this out the door. Any uh, sure. closing remarks before we? Oh, yeah, the we, can, we, can, we, we can schedule the eating feast, uh, I mean, even, uh, you know, even if it's not on Saturday or a different time, so, you know, whatever works. Oh, yeah. Out. Yeah, we can do a yeah, different day sure. and time or something like that, or do a two-in-one day like we did last time where we have the regular we, oh, scoop I'm episode not, on I'm Saturday, not. and then at night we do another one. We, we can call it the final scoop Christmas party. There you go. That works yeah. for me. We're gonna be those guys. That and we're just... gonna, get, we, we gonna, get, we gonna do a giveaway so Shane can, you know, get more compliments. Agreed. But this time I'm not gonna eat at 5 a.m. So fuck you. <laughs> we'll have to shift it to where I guess it's like I don't oh, know. I know. Morning time for me and Robbie. We got we're gonna create a special code for that edition. The code's gonna be Lord. Lord. Hell yeah. Yeah, it, it can't be if it can't be next week. It can't be the week after. That leave and it definitely can't be two weeks after that because then that's three weeks. That's Christmas. So it's. 11th or the 18th. Well, that's actually perfect. Sounds good to me. Either one works for me. I'm good with either weekend. All right. Sridhar, thanks as always for your wisdom, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Yes. Happy Thanksgiving to all. And to all a good night. We'll catch you all next time on the final scoop. <laughs> Take care, guys. Don't get fat, guys. <laughs> 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 <laughs>